Okay, I think we're on here. Hey everyone, my name is Ed Sanfilippo and I'm a policy fellow at the National Alliance on Homelessness and I'll be moderating our discussion today. I'd like to thank you all for joining us on the webinar and also a big thank you to my co-panelists for their participation as well. Joining me are Tina Lentz from Louisville and Jerry DeGreek from Seattle. My colleague Lisa Stand is on the call as well to help facilitate the webinar and the Q&A afterwards. After telling you a bit about each of us, I'll give an overview of asset building before turning things over to Tina and Jerry, and then we can talk policy. At the end, we do have the time set aside for Q&A, so as you have questions throughout the webinar, please send those to Lisa in the question dialog box on your screen. As a reminder, we're recording this today, so both the webinar and all the PowerPoints will be available in the next few days. You can email those out. So, introductions first. Tina Lentz is the Executive Administrator for Community Services and Revitalization and serves as Louisville's Ma the Louisville Mayor's designee for the city's financial empowerment efforts, including Bank on Louisville, the Family Economic Success Network, and the Living Cities Financial Empowerment Integration Project. In addition, Tina represents Mayor Fisher and Louisville on the CFE Coalition. We'll talk about the CFE shortly. Jerry DeGreek is a senior policy advisor to Seattle Mayor Mike McGinn. His areas of responsibility include human services, health, education, housing, homelessness, and financial empowerment. He founded and co-leads the Seattle King County Asset Building Collaborative, and he's the city's lead on Bank on Seattle King County, an initiative to connect unbanked people with affordable mainstream financial services. He is also the city's representative on the CFE Coalition and is chair of the CFE Policy Committee. And finally, as I said, I'm Ed Sanfilippo, and I'm the Economic Development Policy Fellow here at the Alliance. Most of my work is focused on economic security strategies for populations experiencing homelessness, including employment and asset building initiatives, but I also have my hands in projects pertaining to youth homelessness and state level advocacy strategy development. In my spare time, I'm also a third year law student. So what is financial, what is asset building and why is it important? Assets, as you probably already know, can be anything from cash savings to home equity and as you probably also know, it's really important for your financial health to have them. It might seem strange to talk about asset building for people who are experiencing homelessness or who are at risk of falling into homelessness as they tend to have few, if any, assets. I have two quick examples of the relationship between assets and homelessness. First, inadequate financial literacy, including poor budgeting skills or a poor understanding of credit and financial instruments, can lead to an episode of homelessness. The ability to open a bank account due to poor credit and or a lack of physical address can cause a financial burden, especially if the individual has to resort to costly check cashing venues for financial transactions. In addition to the benefits described on this slide, we talk about how assets enable families to weather financial crises, allows families to invest in their children and their community, plan for a secure retirement, and pass on resources to future generations. Asset building as an intervention can also help facilitate housing stability by keeping people housed or by facilitating more successful and permanent rapid rehousing for those who experience an episode of homelessness. There are a number of asset building strategies available and Tina and Jerry will describe what has been done in their respective cities. I offer the list here on the screen as a starting point to get you thinking about different options, but it's by no means exhaustive and there are a number of categories under each of these uh, initiatives. So the initiatives in Louisville and Seattle are the newest additions to the broader financial literacy efforts of the Cities for Financial Empowerment Coalition, or CFE for short. CFE member cities commit to aggressively and creatively leverage local opportunities, resources, and powers to improve the financial health of their residents. The coalition operates under three principles. First, Americans with low and moderate incomes face real obstacles to achieving financial security for themselves and their families. Second, these obstacles must be broken down so these families have more accessible and better pathways to financial stability. Third, 
city governments are uniquely poised to break down these barriers and actually create such opportunities. In addition to Louisville and Seattle, who are the newest members, the other member cities include co-chairs New York City and San Francisco, plus Chicago, the County of Hawaii, Los Angeles, Miami, Newark, Providence, San Antonio, and Savannah. You can check out the CFE website for more information, especially if they're in your community. So I'm going to th turn things over to Tina now, and she can describe what they're doing in Louisville. Thanks, Ed. I'm, um, I, think, I think that has it. Thank you. Um, I am Tina Lentz, uh, as Ed mentioned, Executive Administrator for Louisville Metro Community Services and Revitalization. And I want to thank the Alliance for, and Ed for providing me with this opportunity to share what's going on here in Louisville. Um, a little bit of background about our financial empowerment efforts. Um, Starting back in um, 1997, with um, our housing authority became one of the first um, mortgage subsidy programs um, that were started, um, and so that sort of got us on the road to uh, financial empowerment work. We also do free tax preparation services, benefit screenings. We started a family economic success network. Of course, you mentioned the Bank on Louisville campaign. Um, this grant through the Living Cities to embed financial empowerment into the service delivery model of homeless service providers. And then, again, as being the member of the CFE, uh, one, the newest member of the CFE, um, I just wanted to share that our interest in the CFE was ignited um, upon the release of the, um, the CFED report, Building Economic Security in America's Cities. When we read that and saw how our efforts were aligning with the strategies that were listed in that report, it, it excited us and wanted us to become a member of the coalition, but it also uh, provided highlights to where we knew we needed to do some additional work. And um, we're just real excited to be part of that coalition so that we can learn from the experts such as Seattle and, and all the other cities that you mentioned. Um, getting to the objectives of our um, the Living Cities Grant for Financial Empowerment Embedding, um, it's a, uh, the objectives of that grant include the development of a learning network, facilitated strategic planning that is inclusive, cultivates ownership, and keeps partners well informed of the process, and increases awareness around a community-wide effort to build capacity, integrate sound practices, and implement a delivery model that can be replicated and sustained. Part of our capacity building strategy is to provide training to those who are delivering the services directly training that would bolster their own financial confidence and make starting the conversation around money easier. Historically, uh, in our community, the focus of social services was on a meeting basic human needs, operating as a safety net for families in crisis. Currently, um, there's a community-wide effort focused on the shift to long-term stability through, the increase, through increased financial capability. And this goal, the goal is to have results that are connected and produce out, uh, community outcomes. Within this initiative, we have 12 organizations who serve those who are homeless or at risk of homelessness and make up what we call our services expert team. Their purpose is to share service, knowledge, and expertise and to identify specific touch points and opportunities for integration. We also have what we call our balcony team that is comprised of key community stakeholders who bring additional expertise and resources to the table. Their purpose is to provide strategic input and critical thinking to the work of the integration. When we were building our, um, around building our coalition, uh, as I said, our teams are comprised of agencies who receive CDBG and ESG funding via Louisville Metro government um, um, around one and a half million dollars. There are also local asset building experts and financial education experts. Among our successes, we like to count the um, how the consensus and the development around a common language that the teams have worked on, the development of an asset and resources bank, um, establishment of an assessment of assessment baseline that include, include quality, coordination, integration, and service, and well-received training options.